Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's look at all the missions in totality that's ever been sent to Mars. And there's been a total of 49 missions, and of course counting, I think there's several more that will probably be sent to Mars this year, but by the year 2021, there's been 49 missions to Mars. And I've kind of laid it out so you can see the time frame and whether or not they were successful, when they're marked with an S, when they failed, when something went wrong and nothing uh, was accomplished, and a partial fail where there was some partial success to the mission. The mission objectives were not uh, accomplished, but at least uh, there was some, some accomplishment as far as making it to Mars and things like that. Uh, in some cases, there were some landings that su succeeded, but communication was lost, that type of thing, so that no real benefit was gained other than the experience, of course. So th there's been 49 missions, and notice that the initial cluster in the 1960s and 70s is very big. Of a lot of missions, and let's see how many there were. There was uh, 6, 8, 12, uh, 14, 18, 23 missions. So almost half of all the missions ever sent to Mars were sent in the 1960s and 1970s. And then there was this dry period here where no missions were sent to Mars. Then there was two missions to Mars that were sent uh, just before 1990. They failed, then again, nothing. One partial failure, nothing. So there's basically a long period of almost 20 years where no successful missions were sent to Mars and then things started to improve again in the later years, in the last 23, 24 years or so. Notice there were a total of 25 missions that were successful and a total of 24 that essentially failed. Even a partial fail would be a fail because you really didn't accomplish your mission objectives. Notice here that if we set it up by the decade, in the 1960s there were 12 missions, in the 1970s there were 11, in the 1980s there were 2, 1990s there were 7, and then it started picking up again. Of course, we're only a few years into the 2020s and the more missions will be sent again. Uh, notice that the number here, the percentage, is the percentage successful. Notice that in the 1960s, only a quarter of the missions sent to Mars were successful. In the 1970s, that had gone up to almost 45%. Then we had these fails in the 1980s. We're back at about 43% for the 1990s. And then since the year 2000, the success rate has been much better. Definitely more than half, and in some cases, every mission sent to Mars was successful in the 2000s, and of course the, the first three of uh, this decade were successful as well. Uh, so here you can see the, the arrangement. Again, it was very difficult to accomplish what they were trying to accomplish in the early years with the more primitive technology. The, the quality of the circuitry wasn't as good. They had to be very rigorous because they underwent a lot of g-forces, a lot of shaking, uh, tremendous temperature variations in space when the sun hits the spacecraft on one side and it's very cold on the other side. All those various things do make it very difficult to produce the kind of quality products that can withstand all those conditions. Then of course the computer programming has to be just perfect on the primitive computers, especially when we talk about the 1960s and 1970s. The power constraints were always a real big problem. And then the mechanical aspect, sometimes uh, valves wouldn't be released properly or clamps wouldn't be released properly. Things could go wrong in so many different ways because of the conditions experienced, especially when there's a lot of stresses due to space travel, a lot of temperature changes, and that has a lot of effect in the way the metals change, the, the stress on the metals, the expansion, the contraction, and so forth. So, so many things could go wrong, and you can see that in the later years, the success rate became quite phenomenal. Uh, so going to Mars is not an automatic, it'll probably fail, it's, it'll probably succeed and now people are more surprised when it doesn't succeed because a lot of missions are, are indeed successful. Landing on Mars is another story, we'll talk about that in another video, but here you can really see how things uh, change. Now, what happened during these years? Where well, a lot of things happened, there were a lot of uh, economic uh, upheavals, uh, we had the, uh, the oil shortages, the oil embargoes, uh, we had the war in Afghanistan that, uh, that the Soviet Union was fighting. We had the Vietnam War that ended about here. Um, so there was a lot of things that were going on in the world. Uh, tremendous inflation periods. There was a lot of uh, problems with the budgets. And also during that time, 
people started turning and saying, well, instead of going to Mars, let's start visiting the other planets. So we sent some spacecraft out to visit the gas planets and their moons. And uh, we also start exploring other aspects of our solar system. Um, rather than just going to the nearby planets. But of course, then once the technology improved and we started having the ability to land on the planet and send a rover to the planets, the activity started picking up again because again, we could discover all kinds of interesting information about the planet with that increased technology. So this gives you kind of a feel for it. Imagine 49 missions to Mars. Who could have thought that we had that many attempts and who could have thought that so many of them initially failed but they didn't give up. We kept on trying and uh, yeah, eventually it paid off with some very successful missions in the later years. So that's the story, the overall story about the 49 missions to Mars.